So today, I'm out kind of scouting a location, an area I like to go to in the autumn, get some nice fall color. And That's me five years ago. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's been five years since I started this Riding Itch Photography YouTube channel. This was the first video just after leaving a 25-year career in photojournalism to pursue photography as an art form. So today, I thought we'd look at some of the highlights of this journey, a journey I've been on for five years. This first video was about... Affinity Photo is my Photoshop replacement. Now, I'm not gonna say it's better than Photoshop or has every feature Photoshop has. But what I'm finding is for editing photos, it has everything that I was using in Photoshop. It just does it in a different way. Through the years, I've made quite a few videos showing how I use Affinity Photo. These videos weren't meant to be tutorials, just videos showing how I use the software to edit my images. In hopes it would help other photographers decide if this software would suit their needs. I covered topics like how I use overlays, how I sharpened my photos, converted images to black and white, how I added borders. I even showed how to add the Orton effect to your images. I saw someone create this effect in Photoshop and figured Affinity Photo users might want to be able to do the same thing. It's something I've never actually implemented into my photography. It just, it just didn't fit what I'm doing. But I figured I'd go ahead and pass along the information anyway. And yes, after five years, I'm still using Affinity Photo. Now, I don't want to get a lot of hate comments from people that say, it's stupid not to use Photoshop. Well, you gotta use what works for you. And that's all that really matters. What matters is you get the image you want at the end of the whole deal. So I have a confession to make. I shoot JPEG. That being said, I shoot raw as well. Good grief, I can do both. <laughs> Early on, I was all digital. Most of the color was some black and white starting to creep in. The subject matter was mostly nature. I did some macro with extension tubes and hummingbirds utilizing my garden. And frogs and turtles out of the local pond. Today we're looking for hummingbirds in this right in the edge of log. It's nice to find a subject that's cooperating. But I'm finally getting the frog shot I wanted. It's not like it's great art, but it is good fun. Twin Lake. I think it's north. 
two of them. <laughs> yeah, I was running around here like chicken with his head cut off here. So sorry I didn't uh, start shooting video till now. The light was changing so fast, and I really couldn't find a composition last night or a spot to shoot from. So I just decided to come out and wing it. And as you can see, there's kind of a fog a mist on the lake. And for about five minutes, there was some light. I'm trying to use this, if you can see it, I'm trying to use this stick in the water here as kind of some foreground interest. There's not a lot on this shoreline that's in the water that kind of helps anchor that foreground a little bit. But I've done some shots with just the reflections and the, and the uh, uh, mist with a little bit longer lens. So we're, we've kind of mixed it up this morning. We've, we've pulled every trick out of the bag we, we could think of to, to make this work. <laughs> I'll have something to show you. I'm just not sure it's going to be something I'm really that proud of. But that's, that's part of the deal, you know. I kind of find myself in this big meadow. Having a hard time figuring out where to point my camera. I kind of like this line of vine maple with the trees popping out across on the back side of this meadow. Now I've shot it with a single frame and I've also tried a, a little bit of a panorama um, but just keeping it horizontal and just shooting a couple frames that way going from, that, from uh, left to right. And uh, I'll probably decide when I get back to the office if uh, which one I'm going to use. This could be another one of those cases where I'm just really attracted to the, the color and uh, not the, the composition, but we'll see. I'm trying to make compositions out here, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's pretty cool. Hopefully the wind's died down enough for you to hear me, but it, it did seem to die down quite a bit. So I was able to kind of get a little bit of reflection in this uh, this little tide pool here. I really like how the rock sits like it's almost like in an island. Right in this, I love the shape of this uh, this tide pool and how the clouds are kind of playing. This this could be my favorite shot of the day. Still chasing autumn, but the photo I'm making here probably could be made any time of year. I noticed this stand of trees last spring when I was out in the Menagerie Wilderness doing some wild rhododendron photography, and I'll, I'll leave a link to that if you want to catch that one. And I noticed this stand of moss-covered trees. And I, at the time, I didn't have really time to photograph it. So today I'm kind of out looking for some autumn photos and I thought I'd go ahead and swing by here and see if I can't make some images in this stand of trees, probably going to be black and white, before I kind of head into the uh, colorful autumn scene picture taking mode. So what I've got going on here is this kind of cool wedge triangle shape pattern of fern in the foreground with a nice vertical moss covered tree element in the in the back kind of makes kind of a has kind of a cool graphic feel to it I think it's going to be make a pretty cool black and white image Today we're out on the Pacific Crest Trail and we've got my film camera. I have a history on my channel of starting and stopping 
using film over the last year. My idea was to have a series using film on my channel. It's called Adventures in Film. But I haven't been able to keep up with that and I, I apologize for that. I, I tend to apologize quite a bit on my, on my channel. <laughs> And that was finally the start of my Adventures in Film video series. Something that popped up more and more as time went on. A new roll of film, a new adventure. I'm looking forward to seeing where this roll takes me. A new roll, a new adventure. A new roll, a new adventure. Welcome to another Adventures in Film. Today we've got T-Max 100. Ilford Delta 100. It's time for another Adventures in Film. Today we got Delta 400. When the roll is finished, the adventure is over. Film photography started to be a regular feature on my YouTube channel. And I got hooked. I loved it. I used multiple film formats. I started with an old Pentax 645 and made some pretty good images. After that camera went down a couple times, I decided I needed to upgrade and go with something a little bit newer. So I replaced that old camera with the Pentax 645N, and that was a much better camera. I have wanted this camera since it was announced back in, I think, 1997. This was my dream camera. I was so excited when I got this yesterday when it came in the mail. I was like a little kid. I, I was, I've never been that excited about any of my digital cameras. To me, they're like hammers, they're just tools. But this, this kind of takes me back, back when I really was passionate about photography and was excited about taking pictures. And maybe that's why I needed this camera. I highly recommend the Pentax 645 system. It, it's really a, a great medium format system to work with. But a word of caution with the original 645, I had a lot of trouble with the plastic becoming brittle in the battery holder. I went through a number of battery holders. So if you're going to buy the original 645 camera, be aware that that could be a potential problem. After using medium format for a while, I talked myself into going into large format. <laughs> I just wanted that bigger negative. Since I was poor, the only way I could finance that large format gear was to sell off my medium format. And so that's what I did. I shot 4x5 many years ago with color film. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to try it now with black and white. What keeps me coming back to this piece of public land? It's the diversity. There's so much here. It's this pretty small area, but you've got wetland marshes, oak savanna, stands of evergreen trees. It's, it's just a, a great place to do landscape photography. There's so much potential here. It's also a great location to break in a new lens. And after about a year, I decided large format photography really wasn't working for me. It didn't really work well with my shooting style. So I went back to where I started. I went back to 35 millimeter. Loading a roll of film into a new camera is like coming home. Back to where it all started. 
the beginning of my photographic journey in the spirit of exploration, in the spirit of discovery. That's where it all started for me. And it started with a roll of 35 millimeter film. In early 2019, looking back at the images I made over the 2018 year, I started to notice a trend. All my favorite images were shot in black and white. So that's when I went all in on black and white for my art. First with digital, then gradually adding more and more film. Because I really liked the way film rendered black and white. I was never 100% film. Before time, I was 100% black and white. It's where my passion was in photography. found my shot. I thought this was a person standing in the sand. I was way, way over there. <laughs> and I saw this sticking out of the sand, I thought, with these, li with these shadowed lines on the front and, 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 front and back of, the, of the, the old tree. I thought, there's my shot right there. It's taken me almost an hour to get here, and I'm quite happy with the composition. I just hope it turns out. I'm shooting it with a 150 millimeter lens, slightly compressed. Got some cool lines through it, and with the, with that nice anchor point in the center there, kind of off to the side. That tree I might get a couple wide angle shots now. I think. This is what I came for. I'm pretty happy. But why black and white? Why was I so drawn to doing my photography in black and white? After a lot of psychoanalyzing myself, <laughs> I came to the conclusion that after doing thousands of documentary photography assignments through the years in color, I had a hard time seeing the art in color. Black and white just felt more like art to me. Black and white photography was my passion. And to this day, that still hasn't changed. What has changed though, is I can finally see the art in color photography. It took a while, but I was able to bring color back and feel like I was making art when I was using color for my photography. I love the layers and the texture, but I'm not sure not sure if this is enough to make me stop him. You know, once you start commit to a shot, it takes a while. So even in digital, but I'm I might make a few frames here. This a little bit a little bit more into the sun than I'd like, but I, I kind of like the layered effect. We got some a, a light section right through the middle. This is purely just light shadow, <laughs> super super minimalist. And there might be something up here too. This might be where we start making our first shots. The trick is 
when you're shooting dunes is to be aware of your footprints. I want to shoot from a further away and then work my way closer. And uh, as the closer I get, there might be new shots that, that show themselves. But if I start close and move my way back, then, of course, I'm shooting over my tracks. And I'd, I'd rather not do that. So I'm, I'm starting at the bottom of these dunes, and I'm going to kind of work my way up and uh, see what we can find. But that's the first shot. There's a lot of real subtle stuff out here, it, which is kind of my, my style of photography. <laughs> If you get my photography, often you get the subtle. You you can. I'm often surprised when someone gets what I'm trying to do with the photograph, because it it can be on the vague side sometimes. It can be a bit subtle. But there are some people once in a while that know exactly what I was trying to do, whether it's successful or not. And uh, those are the people that probably subscribe to my channel. <laughs> So you can tell there's not a whole lot of them. All right, let's uh, let's move up. I, I still think I'm gonna I, I can work in this area here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more shooting here. But I need to recompose. Black and white photography was my passion, and to this day that still hasn't changed. What has changed though is I can finally see the art in color photography. It took a while, but I was able to bring color back. And I feel like I was making art when I chose to use color to make my images. A large part of what I do is still grounded in black and white. But now I mix in color when the opportunity arises. Over the last five years, I've learned a lot about myself as a photographer and an artist. I think I've found my voice. I think I finally have a good idea on what I'm trying to articulate with my images. I may not always be successful at that, but at least now I have a good idea where I want to go. As far as this channel goes, it's been clear to me for a while that these videos will never be anything more than a way to share my photos. But that's why I started this channel five years ago. And I've grown to accept that that's all it's meant to be. My trailer says it best, come along as I try to become the best black and white photographer I can be, in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Right in the Edge. But today, we found a shot. We found something. <laughs>